Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer. In this lesson, we're actually going to go back and we're going to revisit something that we talked about in a previous lesson, and that is down converting from HD to SD. And I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kevin, why would you go and do that? Well, the reason that I want to do that is because we're actually going to specifically talk about a new feature inside of version 7 called FrameFlex. Now what FrameFlex is basically designed to do is it's designed to let you work with footage that's actually larger than the largest frame size that we can deal with inside of Media Composer and that is 1920 by 1080. Of course I'm talking about 2K, 4K, things like that. But in this case what we're going to do is we're going to work with some HD footage 1920 by 1080 inside of a standard definition timeline to simulate whether you're working with, like I said, red footage, you know, maybe, you know, 2K, 4K, like I said before, we're going to simulate that by instead working with HD footage in an SD timeline. And I'm going to show you how simple it is to get in, not only do some letterboxing, some uh, center cut footage, and we're also going to take a look at how to get in and do some very cool pan and scan stuff right from within our Media Composer timeline without having to add any extra effects to our clips. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt and Tab into Avid's Media Composer and we're obviously going to need a clip to work with. Now one thing I want to point out before we go on is that I am in a standard definition project. You'll see if I come to the Format tab, I'm working in 30i and the aspect ratio is 4 by 3. Now what we want to do is we want to AMA link to this clip because in most cases if you're using you know 2K, 4K footage that's really going to be your workflow. You're going to be AMA linking to what's going to happen is is that with the new FrameFlex feature Media Composer is automatically going to scale that footage down to drop it into a 1920 by 1080 uh, timeline or you know frame size because that's pretty much what we're limited to inside of the current version of Media Composer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to AMA link and I'm going to be asked what clip do I want to aim a link to and I'm going to use some basketball footage and I'm just going to choose the clip that has the largest file size because I know that the clip with the largest file size is also going to be the longest in duration. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to say open. Now I have the clip here. I can simply double click on it and this is how pretty much most people would think that they would see this footage inside of a standard definition timeline. You see that the clip is stretched to fill the entire frame. All we'd have to do is simply hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows and then B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit this clip into a new timeline and if people wanted to letterbox this clip what the normal process would be is they would hit control and 8 on Windows command and 8 on the Mac I'm going to come all the way down here to the reformat option I'm going to take the 16 by, 16 by 9 letterbox and simply grab it and drag it and drop it onto this clip and you'll see there we go, we're all set to go. Now obviously the process would be the same if we wanted to get in and do a uh, center cut uh, or even a pan and scan because we have the feature right here. But believe it or not, that is not how we're going to be working with FrameFlex. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this effect because you'll see that as soon as I took this clip and I dragged it and dropped it into a new timeline or actually edited it into a new timeline, I have this little green dot here. Now in most cases what people think when they see this green dot is that we're dealing with mismatched uh, frame rates or what's basically happening is is that Media Composer or Symphony is actually correcting and adding 3-2 pull down to a 23976 shot to make it 30 frames per second. And you know in most cases you'd actually be correct. What I'll do is I'll just stretch the bin out here and you know that this clip is 23976 uh, HD because we're dealing with a DNX HD 175 in this case X codec which tells me 175 equals 23976. But believe it or not something else is going on here because if I took this uh, 16 by 9 letterbox, dragged and dropped it onto my shot, if I was to step into effects mode shift and Y, you're actually going to see that we have two effects going on here. We have the 16 by 9 letterbox and we have the frame flex because remember anytime a clip is put into a timeline where that clip doesn't share the same properties as that timeline or that sequence, frame flex is automatically going to be added. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to remove the effect here. Let's just hit F5. That's my shortcut for remove effect. If you don't have it mapped, you can always find it right here at the top of your timeline. Now what most people do is they think, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. I'm going to step into effects mode and I'm going to come in here to frame flex and I'm just going to start moving some stuff. Well, I can't really do anything with X and Y. Okay, let's adjust the size. 
Okay, so something's happening here. So we've got this little sort of window, and we're kind of zooming in here, but I don't really know what is going on. I, I can't really figure this out. Well, what exactly is going on here is we're actually doing things in kind of a reverse order. We're sort of putting the cart before the horse, or I guess the chicken before the egg. What we actually need to do before we even take this clip and even start working with it in our timeline is we want to work with it over here in our bin. Now, Kev, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, what I want to do is I want to, with this clip selected, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to come down to Source Settings. Now, you're going to see inside Source Settings, we have a few options, such as in AMA Source Settings, you'll see that we can get in. We can change the field order to uh, from progressive to interlace if we wanted to. Once we've done the, once we've switched it over to interlace, we can get in and change the field layout from merge to split and even get in and adjust the graphics versus video levels. Right now we're set to don't modify, but we could expand video levels uh, to graphic levels or compress graphic levels to video levels. Now, what exactly do both of those mean? Well, as you're probably aware, when you import footage, if you import it, in the wrong color space, if I just come to import here, uh, if I come to options, this is really where we're setting color space, RGB or 601709. Now if we have any one of these set incorrectly, when the footage is brought in, it's going to be, your, your blacks will either be you know crushed uh, and your whites will be too hot. So we can actually get in and set all this up before we even do anything. Now we're not importing, so we wouldn't find it there. But like I said, when we right click and say, give me the source settings of this clip, you'll see this is where we can get in and make those adjustments right here. Now I'm not going to modify any levels. We're obviously dealing with progressive footage, so I'm going to leave it as progressive. We can even get in in the color encoding and get in and change the source color space to, uh, you know, the area Alexa. We can change it to, you know, Sony, Simpty. You know, this is actually giving us a lot of flexibility on a clip-based level, not in a sequence or an effect-based level, but on a clip-based level. Uh, but last but certainly not least, what's most important for us right now is frame flex. Now, let's talk about doing something simple. Now, basically what we have here is we have our, this represents our clip right here, the top window. The bottom window represents our, uh, basically what we're seeing inside of our bin. You'll see clip, and this is our preview window. So like I said, if we wanted to get in and do something simple like a very basic center cut, you know, you know, these days you see a lot of uh, commercials are center cut. How we basically do that is very simple. We can come in and just simply say reformat our output to be center cut right here, center crop. Boom. You'll see as soon as I do, our uh, 16 by 9 frame has been stretched out so that we have a perfect center crop going. Now what's very cool about this is that as soon as I say apply, it's going to update in our bin. Now, every time I drop this clip into my timeline, it's going to be standard definition center cut. Now, of course, if we wanted to get in and do a letterbox, we can do that as well just as easily. All I'm going to do is simply come to reformat. We're going to change it back to pillar box, letterbox. You'll see it adjust there. I can now simply say apply. I could close the window if I wanted to. Simply hit T on the keyboard and hit B to drop that into a new timeline, letterboxed. Now it's also very cool is the fact that, you know what, well this wouldn't be really very cool, but I had an assistant editor come in at night one night and he accidentally deleted all this footage. See you later. And I've already gone in and I've already set everything up the way that I wanted to. Now of course just because I delete the clip, it's an AMA link to so it's going to stay in my bin or in my sequence. So what I'm going to do is actually just delete the sequence as well. And we're just going to re-import that clip or re-AMA link to that clip. So I'm simply going to select it right here and say open. And you'll take a look at that if I double click on it. Media Composer actually remembers what I had the uh, source setting set to. So that's a very, very cool feature inside of Media Composer 7. Okay, so let's talk about doing some frame reformatting now using uh, FrameFlex. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to zoom in on our two guys here. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to set this back to stretch for a second. Because what I want to do, and I'm just going to apply this here. What we actually want to do is get in and, like I said, reposition our frame inside of our uh, 4x3 frame. Because what's important to keep in mind is that the HD frame is way larger than this 720x486 uh, window here. What I want to do is just make sure that our two guys here are nice and zoomed in on. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is inside of the FrameFlex window, I'm going to have it be the same size as the project's raster dimensions. There we go. 
Now, as soon as I do that, you're going to see now that a new window has appeared that basically is saying, okay, well, this is your 16 by 9 frame, and this is what you're seeing. We're basically zooming in on your image. We can then take our window and just stretch it out like such. But what's important to keep in mind is that we're still actually stretching the image. So if I was to come down and say, let's center cut that, there we go, that's a little bit better. We now have the proper aspect ratio ready to go. I can now simply say apply and add that to my timeline. Now, I know the footage is looking a little bit rough. It's only because I'm actually looking at it in preview mode here. But if I wanted to, I could switch that over to full res and the quality would be very, very good. So let's talk about now what we can do after the fact. Let's just say hypothetically, I'm happy with the way that this is. But I know that as the shot goes on, I'm going to want to get in and adjust the framing as we go. It's actually very easy to do. So let me just show you how simple this is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clip, mark the entire clip by simply hitting T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and I'm going to hit B to edit it into a new timeline. Now you'll see as we get down towards the end of the shot, our guys disappear from the frame, and I don't want that to happen. I always want them to stay centered. So right about here, I'm going to want to adjust what the frame is actually looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut for effects mode. Obviously, if you don't have it mapped to your keyboard, you'll see that we actually have a, a button for it located right here at the top of your timeline. Now what you're also going to notice, and I'm just going to leave this clip in my timeline, is that if I come back to the clip in my bin, right click, and I say source settings right there, you'll see that basically what we now have in our sequence window with effects mode on and what we have inside of our source settings window for frame flex is basically exactly the same thing. So what I can actually do now is simply add a keyframe right here. And as the guys disappear from the frame, I can readjust the frame to about there. Let's just move it over even a little bit more. And what we're going to do is as we come over here, we're actually going to increase the size of the frame. Just like that. Now what's important to keep in mind is we can't go past the edge of the frame. So let's just move back a little bit here. and We'll just expand the size of it a little bit more here just to get right up there. That's okay. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just basically step out of effects mode, come back here. I'm just going to play it from about here because remember, nothing's going to move. But I can now hit play. And as we get up here, you can see that we can actually adjust the frame. Now, obviously, it was a little bit rough. We'd want to do it a little bit smoother. But you get the idea of how this works. What I could even do is just simply come back in here, remove this middle keyframe, come back and step out, simply hit play now. There we go. Very, very cool. Now, like I said, obviously very roughly keyframed. But what's important to keep in mind about this technique is we could actually get in and just like I said, in this case here, just have the camera focus on a very specific part of the frame. This is very handy, like I said, especially if you're shooting in 2K or 4K and you want to get in, you only want to see certain parts of your shot. This is a great way to get in and essentially do pan and zooms on frames or pan and scans on frames that are way larger than the 1920 by 1080 frames that you have to be working with or in the case of what I'm doing now from an HD clip into an SD timeline. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.